pleased to know that uh, one of the tax administration measures being introduced this year, uh, maybe even early next year, is the establishment of a dedicated tax ombudsman. Now, while no details were provided on the budget review document, it did say that the office is intended to provide taxpayers with a low-cost mechanism to address administrative difficulties that cannot be resolved by the South African Revenue Service. To find out more, I'm now joined by Dr. Beric Kroon, who's a tax executive at uh, Edward Nathan Sonnenbergs. Thanks very much for joining us on the program. Welcome to you. All right, so uh, should we be excited about uh, the advent of a tax ombudsman? I personally am excited. It's something a lot of us have been calling for for some time. Because at the moment, there are processes at revenue, but there's no real formalised process or office that one can go to. You know, some years ago, I think it was 2002, they created the Service Monitoring Office. It was an internal decision. There was no statute governing that office. That seemed to work from the beginning. It was headed up at one stage by Professor Matthew she has since relinquished that position. We actually don't even know who heads up that office. And that office, the effectiveness of that office seems to have fallen away. So when we, when that office was launched, the minister or the commissioner indicated we would move to a tax ombud in South Africa, which I think is a move in the right direction. These things are a matter of progression. They develop over time. And taxpayers need to be aware that this office is coming. All right, so let's be clear. I mean, yes. if, if the ombudsman is about fair play, but there's a lot of things that he can't do for us. What that sort of things can he do for the taxpayer? The main thing is to address administrative problems where taxpayers, for example, are not receiving refunds, or taxpayers subjected to an audit, and SARS takes too long to deal with that. There have been too many cases of taxpayers receiving a letter of audit inquiry, taxpayer responds, then they hear nothing. They don't actually know that that is over. There's also glitches sometimes in the objection and appeal process where things take too long to be finalised. The Ombud would also, I think, be entitled to look at the administrative side because it must be remembered the Ombud doesn't replace the court. The Ombud is not a court and doesn't issue judgments. He can't get involved in legal disputes. But he's there to assist where taxpayer has been harassed, where there's been an abuse, where there's been a glitch in the administration, and also aimed at trying to improve the system looking at what's causing frustration in the lives of taxpayers. All right, so a, a, a cause for concern for yes. some would be independence because yes. uh, this ombud has really been set up within the SARS Act and de facto in the, in the commissioner's office, one might suggest. You raise an important point. I think a number of commentators would have preferred that the ombud was totally outside of the revenue. A practical issue on that is then how do you deal with the confidentiality of information? Because at the moment, all information that goes from a tax to size is protected, it's subject to, to secrecy provisions. Once you take it outside of revenue, how do you actually practically manage that? So what they try to do, and they're following the guidelines of the English experience, the taxpayer adjudicator, the ombuds in Canada, that you create a level of independence within the SARS. I know that might sound a contradiction that you're trying to create something that's independent, but it's still within the overall organisation. But that's really what they're trying to achieve, because the Ombud is accountable to the Minister, not to the Commissioner. Okay. The, the Ombud must also report to the National Parliament, so the reports have to be filed there. Initially that wasn't required, but in future, or once this is in place, the Ombud will have to actually su submit their reports to the, to, to the National Assembly. Okay, unfortunately we run out of time, but I think this is a story we'll visit as we get closer. Uh, to the actual setup, because I think we're still about a, w a year away, probably. I think it's probably that. We're okay. waiting for a cent, and then once the ball commences, or it becomes an act, the, the minister has a year within which to appoint a right. person. Okay. Dr. Eric uh, Beric, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the program. Thank you, Peter. All right. Okay. Let's